Um, so I'll be talking this morning about the digit loosened density experiment which we've been running for the last four years which has now more or less come to a conclusion. Uh, for those who are not familiar with that experiment it was part of the LPP program, Livestock Productivity Partnership with MLA and a host of others. So we thank you for that support. The context of the day is this moving towards grazing 2030. And that's the sort of slant that I want to quickly put over the top of the digit loosened density experiment. We're all familiar with tropical grasses now. We've got quite a, quite a body of tropical grass across the northwest and we all know that they can produce. They can produce a lot of dry matter given the right conditions and given the right fertility. We also know that, well, tropical grass perhaps isn't the best quality forage all of the time. And given what Sue just introduced, thinking about, well, what does that mean for enteric methane production? If a tropical grass pasture slips over the edge into the poorer quality forage, that's going to have an impact on methane production out of our ruminants. So what options do we have? How do we, how do we improve that? Obviously, providing nutrition is one of the answers. That nutrition can come from a fertiliser bag or that nutrition can come from a legume that's growing with the tropical grass. Given the flavour of the day today, well think about where the bag of fertiliser comes from originally. It's coming from a greenhouse gas cycle somewhere else, whether that's uh, fossil gases being converted in, in the, meat, in the uh, process to generate urea. Aaron knows more about that, but I'll just introduce that concept for you. So for legumes, what do we do with legumes? If we can grow a companion legume with our tropical grass, and we can grow sufficient quantity of legume in partnership with our tropical grass, hopefully we fix nitrogen with our legume, and hopefully we can cycle or transfer or the grasses can latch onto some of that fixed nitrogen to improve their productivity. So that's the broad rationale or concept for what's one of the things we were looking at with the digit loosened density experiment. And Graham after me will expand a little more on one aspect of the work which we did in the 2021 season which was to take some samples and see if we could quantify some of that nitrogen fixation by the lucerne and or the transfer of that fixed N to the grass. And Graham will give us some words of wisdom on that. So for those who are not familiar with the, what we call the DLD experiment, I'll just very quickly outline what it was. It's uh, comprehensively described in the notes, but for, for completeness, we had five treatments. The first one was pure digit grass, uh, labelled as L0, Lucen 0 in the, in the notes. And on the other end of the spectrum, we had all Lucen, otherwise known as L100, 100% Lucen. In the middle, we had three contrasting ratios of digit grass and Lucen. So L25, 25% density of Lucen, L50, 50% density of Lucen, L75, 75% density of Lucen. All our treatments were established at a uniform plant density of eight plants per square metre. And that came from some of our prior work and happy to talk about with that later. So all treatments had the same plant density it was just the combinations that varied. Over the four years, we measured soil water content, we measured the weather conditions, we cut herbage every six weeks throughout the year, ongoing over four years. So it generated quite a comprehensive data set over very interesting weather conditions or climate conditions. Cast your mind back to 2018, 2019. Maybe you can't do that. Maybe you've fortuitously blocked that out of your memory because it's a pretty horrendous time. So we established in 
2018 through to 2022. Now, when we established, it was dry, we were on a drying cycle, we were getting deeper and deeper into that drought. The drought peaked by my weather records here at the end of 2019. To put that into context for you, for the 12 months to the end of 2019, I think we recorded here something like 262 millimetres of rain. Over the 24 months up to the end of 2019, it was the driest 24 months in the record. To the end of 2019, it was also the driest 36 months in the rainfall record. So let's just call it horrendously dry. In December, January 2019, it started to rain and it hasn't stopped. So we've had these really contrasting growing conditions for these mixtures with digit grass and lucent. The first two years characterized as hot and dry. The second two years characterized as mild and wet. Now, with your background knowledges of how digit grass pastures grow and your background knowledge of how lucin grows, which one of those ratios of the mixtures do you think perform the best throughout the whole four years? Any guesses? L25, we've got L25 over here on the left. Do we have an advance on L25? L0, zero, zero lucent, just feed it fertilizer, it'll do well. Any other advances on L0 and L25? L25, the highest bid, any more? No, okay. So, the message is that for the first series of years and the second series of years, the best mixture was not the same one. So in the hotter, drier conditions, the mixtures dominated by digit grass, so the L0 fertilized, the L25, thanks Brett, and up towards the L50, they perform better because the warm, dry conditions favored the digit grass. In the second two years, with milder temperatures, more rainfall, better growing conditions, mixtures dominated by lucin performed the best. So the L75s, 50 and 75 and up to the L100. So when we balance all of that out, well, fortuitously, the L50, 50% lucin in the mix, generated the greatest amount of herbage over the four years. It had the highest water productivity over the four years. The production was greater than pure digit grass, fertilized at 100 units each year. The production of the L50 mix was greater than the pure lucent sward. Which just goes to demonstrate that when we get the conditions right, that L50 is a good option. In the milder conditions, lucent will do better. In the warmer, drier conditions, the digit grass will do better. One hundred units of N on a tropical grass pasture, is that enough? I've got a few shaking heads saying one hundred units of N on a tropical grass pasture is not enough. It's not enough to give us maximum productivity, we know that. Is it enough to hold our pasture quality at a sufficient level? for our livestock to benefit? Probably not. So to demonstrate that point, I'll contrast what we recorded for our production in the last 12 months of the experiment, so last summer, compared with another experiment, which was just down the hill in the same paddock, same species, digit grass. So we fertilized in our nitrogen rundown experiment, which is also completed, but that's the story for another day, one of the treatment, treatments was 200 units of N, continuous for the last 10 years. Split application, not all delivered at once, but total production 
to contrast between the end rundown experiment, 200 units of end versus our 100 units of end on our DLD. Move my thing so I can see. In 2021-22, uh, we achieved 8.4 tonne of dry matter total on our 100 unit digit grass. In the end rundown experiment, 200 units of N achieved 15.1 tonne. Not quite double, but very close to it. Going along with that, the forage quality samples that we took on, on that experiment during those, uh, that particular year, the plane of nutrition provided by that digit grass fertilized at 200 units of N was higher and sustained longer throughout the growing season. Which brings us back to the beginning of where we started today's um, concept for today. Higher quality forage, better digestion, less methane, better livestock performance, and so the cycle goes around. So just think about that. For our loose and digit mixtures, yes, we could match the production of 100 units of N. But to go even higher, how do we get that production up to a level and a quality that matches 200 units of N? That's a bit of a challenge out there. But with that, with that introduction and with that concept sitting in your head, Perhaps it's now a fortuitous time to bring Graham across to discuss what we saw when we monitored soil and we monitored herbage for nitrogen fixation by our lucent in our DLD over the 2021 season. So we wanted to try and have a go just in that one-off season to see if we could quantify the fixation, what sort of total levels of fixation was Lucent achieving, and or whether that fixed N was making its way, some of that fixed N was making its way into our digit grass companion. Yeah, okay, so a little more background on the DLD experiment. It was what we call a spaced plant experiment. So Within the construct of a scientific experiment, we physically planted the eight plants per square meter in patterns so that we knew that our densities were consistent among our treatments. So very particular about the way we went about that. That eight plants per square meter from our prior work, somewhere between four and nine plants per square meter for digit grass in this environment, is, is about the sweet spot for a productive pasture that makes the best use of its resources and gives us good productivity. That came from some of our prior work. If we're thinking about out in the commercial paddock, how do we do this? <laughs> if we think about that out on the uh, commercial scale, I think that moving, uh, aiming to sow a mixture in the spring so we'll go with a spring sowing rather than autumn because we want the tropical grass to come up as well. If we aim to sow and achieve a sward that is higher than 50% loosen, somewhere between 50 and 75% loosen when the stand comes up, that's probably what I would aim for on a commercial paddock because I know that the loosen won't hold that density the loosened density will slip through time. We lose plants, they drop off, they get disease, all the rest of it. But we know that digit grass will thicken up. So I think aiming for a little bit more loosen at establishment and letting the sward drift back would give you the longest, uh, the longest stand life. I think planted as a mix, whether that's alternate row or whether that's down the same tube, but either either or but um, all our stands all our sorry all our sown stands we sort of aim for around that two kilograms of seed in total um, so then it's a matter of matching how much of that is loose and how much of that is digit thanks george and uh, thanks for the invitation to come and talk today yeah i 
really had only a very small role in what's um, yeah, Sean's baby, uh, I suppose, in terms of, of the trial work. But as he said, uh, we, we came along in the third year of a four-year trial and we did uh, one, one season of um, monitoring just to look at the nitrogen fixation, what's happening, um, in, or what's the loosen doing in terms of nitrogen fixation and is there any chance of looking at whether that's transferred to the, to the digit grass growing in, in combinations with it. So to cut to the chase, the take home message first in case you fall asleep as I drone on, is that the 50-50 mix was, was really the best option uh, in, in terms of, um, well, not just in terms of nitrogen fixation, but in terms of the system. So as Sean has talked a lot about um, differences in production between the treatments. It's really important to think about, well, it's not just production, but it's also the quality. And I think he's also touched on that. Uh, and the quality in terms of the, you know, the protein that, that's available in the forage. And the, the lucent's providing a lot more of that uh, quality than the digit grass does. Um, so that's, that's the, um, the, the quick take home message. Well, 50% or more lucent in, in this particular season was, was, I guess, the answer. So fixation, how much of the nitrogen that the lucent has in its plant tissues, how much of that came from the air, which is what we call fixation, nitrogen fixation. Um, legumes, um, a bit like you lot in a couple of hours, like, like a free lunch, and they'll take what's there in the soil first, and then they'll fix what they need extra from the, from the air using the rhizobia uh, symbiosis. So it's not growing a legume, you get all of your nitrogen for free. So if there's, there's uh, soil nitrogen, the, the legume will use that first. Uh, if it's in a combination with digit grass, it'll have to compete with the digit grass, which uh, probably does not so well because the digit grass, I think, tends to kick off a bit, a bit earlier in the season. So the digit grass gets the stuff that's been sitting there during the, the dormant part of uh, the year. Um, and then it says, well, okay, the digit grass has, has got my lunch, so I've got to start fixing. So then, then it's fixing. So the actual amounts of fixation we measured ranged from 35% up to uh, probably about 95% uh, between uh, different parts of the season. So this was measured, uh, as, as Sean said, through cuts that were done every six weeks. Um, the, the lowest amount of, or the last proportion of fixation actually happened in, in January. So uh, if you can imagine what, and that was for all of the treatments that had loosened in them. So that's probably because that's a, a warm, wet time of year, and particularly in that year, so there's a lot of um, mineralization of the soil organic matter to produce uh, mineral nitrogen, and um, therefore there's, there's a lot more in the soil pool that the lucent can get for free before it goes to the air through the fixation process. So it was, that's where we got the lower figures of, of sort of the 35% up to about 50% for some of the treatments. Uh, it was also a little bit lower, um, particularly at the start of the season for the all loosened treatment, the L100, which was around 40% at the start. Again, because it didn't have that competition with the digit grass at the start of the season, so it was a bit lazy. It, it took what it, it we could get from the soil first. The, the peak amounts of nitrogen fixation happened sort of uh, in November, early December, uh, when that early, um, that early growth had sort of used up a lot of the soil uh, mineral nitrogen and the lucent had to start working for it. So it's sort of going up and down and up and down and then it, it sort of went up to the highest amounts at the end of the season. Again, because what was there had mostly been used up, the, the conditions are not as conducive for lots of mineralisation to occur in the soil and the, the legumes got to work a bit harder. So that, that was sort of the ups and downs of, of the legume nitrogen fixation. Um, if you're interested in how we measure it, it it's, it's really quite simple. We use a, um, a, a fact that the nitrogen in the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen 14, so there's an atomic mass of 14, but there is a little bit out there that's nitrogen 15, so it's an isotope of nitrogen. It's slightly heavier because it's got an extra neutron, but that's a bit of, uh, chemistry there, but it's a stable isotope. It, it's not radioactive. It doesn't break down. It's just in the atmosphere. We know how much is in the atmosphere. It's, it's a fixed amount. 
but the amount in the soil varies because of soil nitrogen processes. So we can measure, by cutting a plant, we can measure um, if, it, if the plants are non-legging, we know it's getting all of its nitrogen from the soil. So that'll tell us what the soil isotope ratio is. If we measure, do a cut on a legume, um, we know it's getting some from the soil and some from the air. We know the ratio, the isotope ratio in the air, and we know the isotope ratio in the soil from that non-legume plant. And then from that, we can back calculate what the actual amount fixed by the legume is. So um, it's actually yeah, quite a, a neat little thing called the natural abundance technique. And uh, as, as Sue said, you can measure that on all sorts of legumes, provided that you have a non-legume growing in, under the same conditions. And in this trial plot, we didn't have that because the non-legume, the D100, or sorry, the L0, which was all digit grass, had fertilizer applied to it, which adds another source of nitrogen, which has a different isotope ratio. Yet again, we can't use it. Fortunately, there was some of the same um, non-legume grasses growing just outside the trial and uh, they were not fertilised, so we could use those as our reference plant. So it did work out all for the best. Um, so in, in the, I don't want to make you go and look at the notes, but uh, when you get a read, this, this bit's on, on this page here where there's three different graphs. And, and I guess one of the things that it shows is, yes, the, the production of dry matter goes up and down during the season. It gets very high for the, for the all um, digit grass um, treatment after the application of the 100 units of fertiliser, but then it goes down fast. And, and this is also one of the things that we saw with the isotope ratio uh, measurements is that by January, that 100% uh, digit grass was not uh, using any of the fertiliser anymore. So the fertiliser is basically used up and it was back to relying on what was um, in the soil. There's, there's another little peak in production of the digit grass, as I said, a little bit after that as as um, some more mineralization um, provided some more. But overall, it, it, you know, it sort of went up, sort of boom, then bust, and then a little boom after that. But then it petered out um, you know, by sort of um, April, it was providing no more feed. Whereas the mixture treatments, the, the amount of feed available there uh, continue on through to May. And that was largely through the contribution of the legume. So legume uh, biomass was you know, providing a greater continuity of uh, forage there. And also, if we look at the, the, well, when you get a chance later on, look at the third uh, column there and you'll see uh, there's more um, protein or nitrogen in the system within that continuity of, of uh, forage. Um, and I think I've covered most of the points there. So yeah, it's, it's not just about production quantity, but it's all about also about quality as well. So any questions to do with that? Questions? Yeah, the, the question was about the contribution of Lucent to the, to the growth of, of Digit. Um, it's probably some numbers here that I've got, but not uh, on the top of my head. So the, the, well, the Lucent actually fixed pretty much the same amount throughout the different treatments. So where there was only Lucent, it, it fixed a certain amount and then it took more from the soil, where there was the other uh, treatments mixed together. Um, it was, it, it also fixed about the same amount. Um, I'm not sure if that really helps you in terms of the numbers there. Uh, the, the actual amount fixed was around about 150 units of N. Uh, for the season. For the season. So over the season, 150 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. Uh, and there was, there was no actual statistical tested difference between the pasture mix treatments. It was just, it just looks different, I suppose, in terms of um, the total amounts. But the actual amount fixed was the same. 25, 25 units per tonne, was that an average? Yeah, there's, there's often talked about an average of 25 kilograms of nitrogen per tonne of loosened dry, mass, uh, loosened dry matter. Um, and yes, that was pretty much what we got, uh, the range was 12 to 36, but yeah, the average was around about 25. So it was very typical of what our previous studies have found in terms of amount fixed. Yeah, so the, the, uh, the, one of the take home messages was we, we pretty much ended up with the same total biomass over the whole season with the L50 treatment as with the, 
the D, sorry, the L0, uh, the pure digit. Same biomass over the season, but we've got an extended season for it and we got more uh, protein in that mix uh, during the season. And it required no additional nitrogen to, to get that. Sorry, one final thing was going to, in terms of the nitrogen transfer from the loosened to the grass, there's, that's not something that we were able to calculate with, with the measurements we had here, but um, we had a bit of a, I guess it's a qualitative look at that through using these isotope ratio results. And we figure the maximum transfer would have happened in that sort of November, December period. Um, again, just purely based on what was growing hard and what was available for that, um, you know, for those plants at the time. Uh, and the transfer is, you know, it, it's not magic. It's, it's um, can be things like, uh, you know, the loosened dropping some leaves and then they're breaking down and, and mineralizing to, to produce uh, available uh, nitrogen. Um, if, if there's grazing animals, the manure helps recycle that as we've talked about. Even some of the gas as the legume leaves decompose can be taken up by um, grass leaves. Um, some of the le legume roots can actually leak out what we call root exudates. So just, they basically just leak a bit and that's nitrogen in that. Or you can get a direct transfer through fungal hyphae. That's one of the other things. But none of that was studied in this in this particular project. So, so one of the comments here is that uh, if it's an organic uh, form of annual, you know, the release will be a bit slower than the immediate re release you get from something like urea. Um, something from, I guess, my other studies is if you're using urea, you need to you know, plant it with the weather because it's something that if you spread it on the surface and you don't get rain, or you can't apply irrigation water to it, then you can lose a percentage of that. Percentage could be anywhere up to 30%. If it's able to dissolve and hydrolyze, but not actually get washed down to the soil. Um, we've done measurements on that here at, on the station 10 years ago, uh, 25, 30% you can lose uh, in that first few weeks. Um, as opposed to if you used say ammonium sulfate, it, um, you're not going to get that sort of loss, it'd be less than 5%. And the difference being when your rear um, breaks down, it creates its own little micro environment of high alkalinity, which raises the proportion of ammonia gas to ammonium, the iron, and therefore you can actually lose it as volatilization. Uh, where, whereas if you apply ammonium sulfate, it doesn't affect the pH like urea does. So that's one thing to consider um, if you need to put it on, but there's no rain in sight. One a couple of points of clarification that I just wanted to mention. Um, in our digit and loosen work, where we've been growing them together and uh, observing them, to, we usually see that the loosen, depending on the cultivar, but pretty much all cultivars, generally starts growing around six weeks before the digit grass. So that even more amplifies the fact that the loosen's going to be lazy and it's going to take whatever mineral N is in the profile first, which leaves the poor old digit grass behind the eight ball straight away. So that context that Graham just provided with that dynamic, it magnifies the impact of the loosen starting its growth six weeks earlier than the digit grass. Um, another observation which has come out of this work is uh, I'll leave you with the question, and if anyone's got the answer, I'd love to hear it. What drives plant root growth? Grass, plant, root growth. What drives the root to explore the profile? Is it water or is it nitrogen? And I'll leave you with that.